how to import and export data tables with C++ in Unreal. Data tables are awesome, but it's even better when we're able to export them from Unreal to, let's say, save them to another device or modify them using an external script, and then being able to re-import them in Unreal afterwards. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. We're going to take a data table and export it to either a CSV file or a JSON file, and vice versa, we're going to take either a CSV file or a JSON file and import it into Unreal. So let's get to it. But before we get started, this video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the videos 1, 2, and 3 of the series. So if you want more information, I recommend to go see those videos, but otherwise, here is the code. And one last thing, since we're going to reuse the AQ test struct for our data table in today's video, we have to change a little something in the structure definition right here, because by default, all structures that are defined in C++ are not compatible with the data table, you cannot use them with data tables in the editor. But to make them compatible, it's super easy, you just have to make it inherit from the F data table row base right here, and that's just going to fix your issue, it's now going to be compatible with the data tables, and it doesn't affect anything else. Uh, one last thing though, if you want to be able to do that, you need to include the data table.h right here, which is inside the engine module, which is a default module that should be already in your build.cs file. Okay, now let's get to it. So for the header file, it's going to be super simple because we only need two functions. A first function to import a data table from either a CSV file or a JSON file. And for this function to work, we have to feed it the path of the file we want to import. So either a JSON file or a CSV file, the function is going to determine if it's a JSON or a CSV file based on the extension of the file. And then it's going to save it into a data table. So we have to feed it the path of where we want to save the data table in the project. And finally, we have to specify which structure we want to use for this data table in the case that the data table doesn't exist yet. And after all that, the function is going to return us the data table that was just imported. Then the second function we need is a function to export the data table to either a JSON file or a CSV file. And for that one to work, we only have to specify the file path of the file we want to export and also the data table we want to use for the export. And that's it for the header file, but before we jump into the CPP, make sure to forward declare the uDataTable class right here, because we're using it right here and right there, and we want the code to compile properly. Good, now let's jump into the CPP file. At the top right here, I already included all the headers files from the previous videos because we want to reuse those functions. And then we're also going to need a new header file, which is the re-import data table factory. That one is inside the Unreal ED module, which is a new one. So let's go make sure that it is inside the build.cs file and it is right here. Perfect, it's included properly. And now we can go back in the CPP. And now for the import function, it's actually super simple because we're simply going to reuse some code that we already used in the previous video to import some basic assets. But the data table is a little bit more complicated than a basic asset, and that's why we need to use a re-import data table factory to specify some extra information that the basic assets don't have by default. So let's create it. Let's create the factory just like that. So I'm creating myself a new object of type uh, you re-import data table factory and that's going to create the factory for us. Now we have to set a few settings inside the factory for it to work. So the first setting is the type of import we want to do. And in this case, it's going to be a data table type of import because we want to re-import a data table. That just makes sense. And the second setting we have to set is the structure we want to use for the import because if the data table doesn't already exist, the factory we cannot really decide by itself which structure to use to convert the file. And that's it. That's it for the new code. Now we just created the new factory we want to use and now we can create an import task using that factory. So let's create an import task the same way we did in the previous video. So feeding it the source path and the destination path. But on top of that, we just have to feed it the data table factory. And that's going to add all those settings into the import process. Import process that we're going to do based on the import task that we receive right here. So we have the import task. Now we just have to process it just like that. Process the import task feeding it the import task to process and as output it's going to return us the imported asset and that's it we re-imported our data table now we can simply return it at the end of the function the last thing we have to do though is to convert the u object to a data table because uh, right here it's a type u object it doesn't know really that it is a data table so we just have to cast it to a data table so we can return it at the end of the function just like that 
And now for the export, it's even simpler. We just have to convert the data table into a string and then that string we can simply write it into a file the same way we did in the first video of the series. But first, before doing that, I'm going to make sure that my data table is valid. So if my data table is null right here, I'm just going to return right away because I don't want to try to convert it to a string. It will not work. But now that we know that the data table is valid, then we can convert it to a string. I'm going to create myself a little string right here to receive the content of my data table and then I'm going to feed the content of the data table into the string just like that. So if we want to export a CSV file, so if the file path contains the extension .csv at the end, I'm going to take the content of my data table and format it into a CSV string so it's formatted properly to fit into a CSV file. Otherwise, if my file path doesn't contain the extension .csv, I'm going to assume that we want to convert it into a JSON and that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to extract the content of my data table into a string formatted like a JSON. And that's as simple as that. Now we have a string containing the content of the data table formatted properly depending on the file type we want to write. And now the last step is simply to write the text file just like this. The same way we did in the previous video. So we have to feed the file path of the file we want to write and also the content of the file which is the table string that we have right here. And that's it. Now we can jump in Unreal to test all that. So here in the top right, uh, we have two files, uh, one CSV and one JSON file, and they are both ready to be imported in Unreal. Uh, you can see the content of both those files uh, right here. So we have the CSV file and the JSON file, uh, just like that. They are both formatted properly to be imported into a data table. And we're going to import them using the new code uh, we just wrote. So I'm gonna go in my example right here and open uh, this widget to show you how it's gonna work. So here I have a simple widget uh, in which I can write uh, the JSON or CSV path of the file we want to import and also the path of the data table we want to create and then we have two buttons one to import and one to export the data and then if I go in the graph, I'm going to show you the code. If I click on my button to import the file, it's going to call the function import data table from JSON or CSV we just created. The source path is going to be the path of the file. The destination path is going to be the path of the data table we want to create. And for the structure, I decided to use the same structure as we did in the first few videos. So the AQ test struct. And for the event that is called when we click on the export button, we're taking the data table from the content browser. We're loading the asset, casting it into a data table to be able to feed it into the export data table to JSON or CSV function we just created. And for the path of the file, well, we take the path of the file. That's obvious. Now we're going to go in Unreal to see if it works. So I'm just going to go right here and run this widget right there. And the first thing we're going to test is to import this data table JSON into a data table asset. So if I go in my test folder right here, we can see that we don't have anything. And if I click on the import button, now it created the data table asset using the JSON file. And now if I try to do the same thing, but for the CSV, so that's CSV instead of JSON. I'm going to rename my data table asset also so we can have both of them at the same time. And here it is, the import also worked. And now if I open both of those assets, we can take a look at the variables and make sure that they are the same values as we have in the JSON and CSV file we just imported. So here they are and they seem to match. And now to prove that the files are now linked together and we can re-import them super easily, I can just simply modify the JSON file right here, modify the row names and everything save the JSON file, go in my data table that was imported using the JSON file and click on re-import. And now we can see that the row name changed and all the variables are also changed to match the text file. And now the last thing to test is the export to make sure that we are also able to export text files. So I'm just going to rename this data table right here. So I'm going to add a two at the end and I'm going to keep it as a CSV and I'm going to export my data table and not CSV into that one. So export, it should create the text file right here, the CSV file. And now I can do the same thing, but for the JSON. So I'm just going to rename it and click to JSON. Here we go. I now have a new CSV file and a new JSON file. And if I open them in Visual Studio, we can see that their data matches the data table I used for my export. So I have this one right here and that one right there. Perfect. So everything seems to work as expected. And that's it for today's video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.